Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to Chapter 9, where I'm going to continue the discussion of the Hopf bifurcation. So recall last time from that example, we converted into polar coordinates and I was careful to interpret the fact that polar coordinates r is greater than or equal to zero and the structure of this equation was the r dot equation did not depend upon theta we could solve for the r, of, r, r component substituted into the value of r in the theta dot part and just integrate it. But we don't have to quite go that far. We looked for equilibria and then I made the comment that um, well I mentioned already that r had to be greater than or equal to zero so we want to look at the um, behavior of 912. So mu is a bifurcation parameter, and a is a constant. So there are two cases to look at, a greater than 0 and a less than 0. And we'll look at each one individually. OK, for a greater than 0, remember that the uh, the origin is always a fixed point, r equals 0. And it's stable for mu less than 0, unstable for mu greater than 0. And we see that there is an unstable branch of equilibria of the r dot equation. OK, r, we take just the positive part. And what this corresponds to is we have a stable equilibria and it's surrounded by an unstable periodic orbit that as mu increases to zero goes to zero and disappears at the non-hyperbolic fixed point. So if we want to draw a picture of this, the dark circle here is our unstable periodic orbit. Trajectory and the origin is our sink. Trajectory spiral away from the periodic orbit into the origin and that when starting on the outside they spiral around and go off to infinity for this simple equation. At mu equals zero the periodic orbit shrinks to zero and we just have a non-hyperbolic unstable point and for mu greater than zero we have a source, an unstable point, equilibrium point, and no periodic orbits. So that's for the case a less than zero. Now we go to the other case. We still have same, the same stability for the origin. It's a sink for mu less than zero. It's a source for mu greater than zero, but for mu greater than zero, it is surrounded by a per stable periodic orbit in this particular case. Okay, this is for a less than zero. And we can draw the trajectories for mu less than zero, trajectories spiral in to these stable fixed point. For mu equals zero, there's only a fixed point. It's non-hyperbolic, still stable. You can check that from the equations. For mu greater than zero, the fixed point becomes unstable. It is surrounded by a stable periodic orbit. OK, so mu told us mu and a completely describe this bifurcation. a told us about stability of the periodic orbit. 
Okay, periodic orbit in this case for a less than zero is stable, a greater than zero is unstable, a equals zero is a degenerate case that we could look at, but we're not going to right now. And mu controlled the stability of the equilibrium point. Now a mu had mu was related to the linear terms, a was related to the nonlinear terms. So stability of the periodic orbit was determined by the nature of the nonlinearity. So this is a particular example, but this phenomena is a general phenomenon, and it's um, the it's um, the content of the Hopf bifurcation theorem. If you have an equilibrium point, this can be done in, in arbitrary dimensions. I'll mention that when we get to the center manifold theory in the next chapter. But for now, if you have an equilibrium point in two-dimensional, autonomous, if you linearize about it and the eigenvalues are plus or minus i omega, omega non-zero, okay, that's a necessary condition. You can also compute the stability coefficient a. That involves nonlinear terms. There's a complicated formula for it. You can find it in the references and discussion I've given in this chapter. So it's completely a computational type of, of theory. Okay, but it's fascinating because loss of stability of an equilibrium, it's just sitting there. Nothing's happened. Equilibrium. And you have a loss of stability in this way, suddenly it slowly starts oscillating and it grows in amplitude. Okay, so I've given you plenty of references for this. I should mention that Hopf is Eberhard Hopf, not Heinz Hopf the famous uh, topologists in geometry, but there are more, in, there are more references and citations in, uh, in the chapter. So I will come back next time and talk about a couple of other examples where you have more complicated scenarios for the bifurcation of equilibrium points of autonomous vector fields. So bye for now.